Okay guys, we're back for the second video. Uh, the second video talks about a different type of bisector. This is an angle bisector. So an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. Okay, so there are two smaller angles and they are the exact same. Uh, that gives us the angle bisector theorem. What this says is the point on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. The converse, if an interior point is equidistant from the side, then it's on the bisector of an angle. Here's basically what that means. Um, I've got my angle bisector. You can see that here. Okay, these two marks, one there, one there, mean that those are congruent. Okay, so we've got congruent parts there. Uh, and that just tells you it's bisected. What that says is if I pick a point anywhere on this angle, oops, anywhere on this angle, they're going to be equidistant from the side. So you can see that this line and this line are equidistant. Now if I drew this line here, this line here, those two would be equal distant. Okay, so those are some of the properties from these, uh, this angle bisector theorem. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, it's again coming down to solving some equations. Alright, so here's what you got to look at. This first example, you've got two angles that are both 41 degrees. That means they're the same. This line then cut that directly in half. Well, based on that, it's an angle bisector. So these two would have to be congruent. So what that means is that x would be 5, and there's your final answer. So since these two are the same, these two have to be the same, and you solve it out that way. Now for the second one, um, they don't give us the angles, but they tell you that these two values are both 5. And since they're both 5, what that leads us to believe, based on the theorem, is that these two are congruent. Well, congruent means they're equal. I've got 21 equals 3x, divide by 3. I've got x equals 7, and there's your answer. Now the last one, they tell us that the angles are congruent. Okay, they give you that there. What that means is that these two things are also congruent. And as we've seen, congruent means they're equal. So I set them equal and solve it out. So subtract 3x, add 1, and you end up with x equals 3, and there's your final answer. Okay, so for these, uh, it's just understanding the different parts. If the angles are congruent, the lines will also be congruent. And conversely, if the lines are congruent, the angles will also be congruent. Okay, what this does, it introduces another one of these intersections, uh, or points of concurrency, and it's the ones that deal with the angle bisector. So that angle for any three angle bisectors, their intersection is called the in-center. Okay, in-center. Um, so that leads to an in-center theorem. The angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point called the in-center that is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. All right, so if we cut these in half, and so what that means is that these are all congruent in their own little ways, what that tells you is this is the end center. Okay, that's the point where they all cross. So the lines from there back to the sides would all be congruent. All right, and that's what this theorem says. Is those lines back from the center to the sides are congruent. All right, so how does that help us with some problems? Well, let's try a couple out and see what we end up with. Okay, G is the end center of ABC. Find the measure of EG. So we want this right here. Chris, well, Stout, since that please come to the main office. Chris Stout, please come to the main office. Since those three are congruent, what you have here is this triangle. And these have to meet at right angles. So you have a right triangle. This is 12. This is 15. This is X. You've got Pythagorean's theorem. So x squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. So x squared equals 144. Whoops, not equals, so plus. Sorry. Um, so plus 144 equals 15 squared, which is 225. And so now you solve. So x squared, subtract 144 from both sides. That's going to give you 81. Take the square root of both sides and x equals 9. So this side is 9. Well, we know that that then is 9. This then is 9. 
So EG is 9. Then it asks you for the angle of BAG. Well, think about what we know here. Okay, BAG is this small angle here. Well, if this one's 34, that means that this has to be 34. If this is 32, that means that this has to be 32. So the bigger angle is 68, 64, and based on this triangle, we add those together, we get 132, subtract that from 180, this whole angle, because they all have to add up to 180, is 48. So the big angle there is 48. Well, that angle got bisected. So what that means is that it's half of it. So half of that would be 24, and that would be the angle of BAG, and there's your final angle. All right, hopefully that made some sense. Uh, that's the angle bisector. Give these problems a try, and if you need some help, contact me and let me know. We'll talk to you soon.